Hello everyone. Thank you for your interest in this poster presentation about computational results on canonical mean field molecular dynamics approximation of quantum mechanics. This is a joint work between Anders Sapesi, Matthias Somberry, Xin Huang from Department of Mathematics, KTH University, and Peter Plischek from Department of Mathematical Sciences, University of Delaware. In this presentation, I would like to mainly tackle the following three questions. The first question is, what can be determined by canonical molecular dynamics? And the second question, why do we want to use mean field molecular dynamics? The third question is, what is the mean field here specifically in our setting and how accurate is it? To begin with, we can first introduce some background for quantum correlation function and its molecular dynamics approximation. Specifically, we consider a particle system consisting of nuclei and electrons with the Hamiltonian operator H hat, given by the kinetic energy terms and Coulomb interactions here. Particularly here, X in n-dimensional Euclidean space denotes the nuclei position coordinates. Xe denotes the electron co coordinates. And the capital M is the mass ratio between nuclei and the electrons, which is greater than equal to 1. Approximating the operator V on a finite dimensional subspace of electronic eigenfunctions yield the operator V by this d dimensional approximation. And we thus have the Hamiltonian operator H hat in this d dimensional setting. For two self adjoint operators A0 hat and B0 hat at time zero, we can know from the Heisenberg representation that the time dependent observable AT hat can be given by this form with the time evolution operator here. The corresponding correlation function between the two observables AT hat and B0 hat is given by this equation one, where we particularly apply the symmetrized version of AT and B0. Here, beta equals one over Boltzmann constant times the temperature is the inverse of the system temperature. And particularly here, the operator E minus beta hat is known as the canonical Gibbs density operator, which corresponds to the probability of the system being in the state X. Here, H is dependent on X. Of course, it should be given with a suitable normalization. The main aim of our study is to approximate this quantum correlation function, EQM, this molecular dynamics method. Now we can introduce the definitions of our mean field molecular dynamics approximation. Suppose Z0, which consists of X0 and P0, where X0 is the initial nuclei positions, P0 is the initial nuclei momenta, now Z0 is the initial state variable in the phase space. We define a mean field approximation function H of the system Hamiltonian as this equation too. Now we can see that our definition of small h function is given by the partial trace of the Hamiltonian capital H with respect to the Gibbs density here, and specifically it can be written in this form. Now applying this specific form, we can solve for the state of variables zt of the Hamiltonian system with the dynamics given by equation three. Now we see that the dynamics of the state of variables xt and pt are given by the um, gradient of the, of the Hamiltonian H. And uh, the corresponding mean field molecular dynamics approximation of quantum correlation function TQM can be given by this TMF. And particularly, we can also see that it is normalized with the trace of the Gibbs density here. Um, applying semi-classical analysis techniques um, it is proved that the mean field molecular dynamics approximation is with this accuracy term, which 
uh, involves the first term, which is the inverse of the mass ratio. Um, here the mass ratio is the ratio between nuclei and the electron, which is greatly larger than one. So the inverse of m is small. And the, the additional term, which is proportional to the correlation time t, um, the constant before the correlation time t, epsilon square, is related to the variance of the mean value approximation h. For some details of this proof, please see the um, reference one, which is now in archive and submitted. Um, in contrast to the mean field molecular dynamics, the classical molecular dynamics approximation of quantum correlation function uses only the, the information from the ground state. And uh, it is it can be explained briefly in this way. Suppose that the potential operator V of X, which is defined by our d-dimensional approximation of the electron eigenfunctions uh, as here. Suppose now that this potential operator V yields a spectrum with d discrete eigenvalues, and then the classical molecular dynamics approximation to the quantum correlation function TQM now we, we can write it as TGS because it is only based on the ground state eigenvalue, the smallest eigenvalue lambda zero, and it can be written in this equation six. Now we can see that it is basically similar with the definition of the mean field approximation equation four, except that the state variable now follows the Hamiltonian dynamics, which only involves the ground state of the potential matrix, lambda zero. Um, the, an, an alternative method for the ground state molecular dynamics is proposed in previous research work, which could see, could see as our reference tool. And in, in that previous work, an approximation is proposed using a weighted average of all the molecular dynamics evolving on all the eigenstates of the potential matrix V. Now we have D discrete eigenstates, so we, we can consider a weighted average of the molecular dynamics evolving on all of these eigenstates. Now we can see equation seven, which involves the corresponding weight Q of J, which is defined by the probability, basically the probability for the, for the corresponding J eigenstate. And uh, of course now here the corresponding state variable ztj is evolving with the potential lambda j, the j's eigenvalue of the potential matrix. Basically we can understand that the excited state molecular dynamics TES here using the information from all the eigenstates lambda j, j from 1 to d, is more accurate than the molecular dynamics TGS using only the information from the ground state eigenstate lambda zero. Um, but the problem is usually the excited state molecular dynamics is difficult and expensive to implement because for example, um, the commonly applied method for molecular dynamics is based on density functional theory or Hartree-Fock method. And in that case, we only, we principally only have the information from the ground state. And the mean field molecular dynamics as we proposed here can be understood as uh, using partial information involving all the eigenstates. So we can hope that it could improve the accuracy from the molecular dynamics using only the ground state but we cannot expect it to outperform the molecular dynamics using the information from all the eigenstates. So we cannot basically expect the accuracy of TMF is better than the accuracy of TES here. And uh, we can then try to verify this conjecture from our numerical results. Um, as a simple computational example, we consider a one-dimensional model um, using the nuclei in, the, in only the one-dimensional Euclidean space. And the, the two electronic eigenstates, D, 
equals to two implies that we only consider the ground state and the excited state, and one excited state, one ground state. Specifically, we compute the momentum of the correlation function by taking a, a t hat is b t p t hat and b zero hat equals to p zero hat. So basically, we compute the autocorrelation function between the momentum at time zero and at time t. In the first test case, we consider a low temperature case with a large eigenvalue gap. And in this case, we take the parameters so that the probability for the system to be in the excited state is basically quite small and almost negligible. This suggests that the system is always in the ground state. So, and correspondingly, we can define a mean field potential function in this formula. And here, QH basically can be understood as a probability for the excited state. Then the two eigenvalues, lambda 0, lambda 1, and the mean field potential, lambda H, are plotted in this figure 1. And we can see that the excited state is much higher than the ground state, and the mean field potential is basically uh, on top of the ground state. So this is because the temperature is taken low, so the probability for the excited state is quite small. So they, um, and uh, in this case, because uh, basically it, the system is always locked at the ground state, we, we can expect the performance of the three molecular dynamics method to be almost the same, and this is indeed verified by this figure two, uh, which we see that the autocorrelation function of the three molecular dynamics are almost on top of each other. And, uh, and correspondingly, we compute the errors of the three molecular dynamics method, and they are, they are indeed quite similar. The second test case we considered is a high temperature case with a small eigenvalue gap. In this case, we take the parameters so that the probability for the excited state is much larger now, becomes about 46%. This means the contribution from the excited state is non-negligible at all. And this could lead to a substantial difference between the three molecular dynamics approximations. In the first figure four, we can see that um, now the eigenvalue gap between the ground state and the excited state is smaller. And because the temperature is taken relatively high, the mean field potential lambda star is in between these two, um, two states. So basically, we take, if we take the molecular dynamics evolving on lambda star, we can expect a, we can expect the difference than than, you, than only than using only the ground state. And this is and. Um, when we do the plot of the autocorrelation function curves, it seems there is not much difference. But when we indeed compare it with the um, with the quantum correlation curve, now we see a difference. The yellow curve corresponds to the error of the excited state, and it uh, proves to be the smallest. And the, and the red curve is the error for the mean field molecular dynamics. It proves to be in between the ground state and the excited state. The, the purple curve for the ground state molecular dynamics, um, it has the largest error. So in this case, we can see that the error of the mean field molecular dynamics is smaller than the ground state, and it is still larger than the excited state. Okay, as a summary, we can conclude that for a low temperature setting with a large eigenvalue gap, this, the probability for the excited state is small, so all the three molecular dynamics works similarly well. And for a high temperature setting with non-negligible probability for excited states, the mean field approximation could improve the accuracy of molecular dynamics using only the ground state. And uh, the excited state molecular dynamics will give more accurate approximation, but of course it will be also more expensive and difficult. And uh, the references uh, include the first paper, which is now in archive, and the second reference is a previous study on the excited state molecular dynamics. Thank you very much.